Hey everybody, this is your Digital Super Saiyan 3 back here with another video and I say Happy Mother's Day to all my followers and especially their mothers. But anyway, <laughs> that's a story for another day. But anyway, now yes, I am wearing this Superman shirt that I usually wear, but it's because Superman is the topic for my for my latest uh, episode for today. And that is based off of the Superman animated series. I recently just got done watching this series a couple of weeks ago, but even so, it was still fun to re-watch this classic nostalgic series from my childhood. The Superman animated series took place, aired in 1996 to 1999 with its run. So, I thought I'd go and make a list of my favorite episodes of the entire series. And keep in mind, this is my list and my opinions. So, if you have a list of favorite Superman animated series episodes that I didn't feature on here, that's fine. Make your own list. Please make your own list. But just respect my opinions, okay? But anyway... On to the countdown. Number 10, Last Son of Krypton, parts 1, 2, and 3. Yeah, this is a three-part episode that does its job well to set up the series and its characters. Part 1 taking place on Krypton, and we get jor having the big focus on in this episode, in the first part. And then parts 2 and 3 focus on his son Kal-El after he got launched into space after Krypton's destruction. And, of course, we also see Clark learn that he's an alien in the second part, and that he came from a planet called Krypton. And then in part three is where he officially becomes Superman. So, yes, like I said, this is a good pilot to the series, and this was the first episode, the premiere of Superman the Animated Series, and it does its job well to set up its characters. The action was really good in part three. I loved everything about all three parts. The Jarrell parts of part one was pretty good. I loved the Jarrell centricness. And it was the only episode where Jarrell was technically the focus of. Part two was really great. Like, we did get some teenage Clark. And we did get an episode meant like many seasons later or season three per se the final season where where we do get young clark in an episode where he fights brainiac alongside the legion of superheroes so in all sense i still enjoy all three parts of it and then the third part had to be my favorite where he is finally officially superman and he takes on a big robotic suit of armor being controlled by John Corbin, who would later become Metallo, uh, many episodes later. Just a few episodes later, I meant. So, in all sense, it does its job well. Number 9, Lost Little Girl, Parts 1 and 2. Now, yes, this is another two-part, this is another multi-parter, except this is a two-part episode instead of a three-part. Lost... Little Girl Lost Parts 1 and 2 was just an awesome episode. This was them reintroducing us to Supergirl. And I love this introduction that she came from Krypton's sister planet, Argo. Argo. And yes, she has all the same powers of a Kryptonian and the same weaknesses of a Kryptonian. And I love Supergirl's design in this series. And her voice actress, Nicole Tom, does a great job as Supergirl. Especially how she is basically, in part one, trying to stop Inner Gang, which is being led by Granny Goodness. Then, in part two, she goes to Apocalypse to rescue Superman after he is taken by Granny Goodness and the Furies to Darkseid. And, and of course, you know, the finale of this episode was just awesome. Like, Supergirl becomes a hero, and her byline gets 
published by Jimmy Olsen, and Jimmy Olsen gets his byline published, so that's really cool. Number eight. Now, these are two episodes in one spot, but they deal with the same exact villain, Livewire and Double Dose. Yes, the villain Livewire. Leslie Willis was once a radio shock jock who's, who basically hated Superman and basically dedicated her whole radio show to discrediting Superman. Then, at her three-year anniversary special, she gets struck by lightning because, of course, she had to have it outdoors because she's an idiot. And thus, she gets struck by lightning and tries to kill Superman. And I'll, yeah. So, yeah, even when she was normal, before she got infused with all that electricity to become Livewire, she still hated Superman regardless. Then, of course, in Double Dose, in her second appearance, she ends up teaming up with the Parasite. And I love how the Parasite was the first villain to actually deduce Superman's true identity in the series. Yeah, where were you on that, Luthor? So, it's pretty cool that this... that this... that these two episodes exist, especially dealing with the same villainess. I mean, first Livewire by herself, and then in her second episode, a team-up with the Parasite. But of course, Parasite had to have his own motivations. So, yeah, there's that, because he, of course, he had to have an agenda. Number seven is Stolen Memories. Now, Brainiac was introduced to us in the pilot episode of the series. So, when we get to the... So, this is episode eight. Stolen Memories was a great episode for the first season, and man... It was also the first showdown we get between Superman and Brainiac, especially in this version, Brainiac basically takes knowledge from other planets instead of cities, like how he does in the comics in the Silver Age. I guess taking the knowledge from the worlds that he destroys is a better version of Brainiac. I mean, heck, this has got to be my favorite design of Brainiac that ever existed. And I love the way Bruce Timm's team actually put together a really good version of Brainiac. And the fight between Superman and Brainiac in this episode was enjoyable. Um, and of course, I love the exchange that he makes with Lex Luthor. Like, Lex Luthor planned to trade him knowledge from Earth for his advanced technology. But, we all knew Brainiac was going to double-cross, but of course, Lex was also very skeptical as well, and he planned to set things off. Of course, after the fight with Superman, Brainiac did download his subconscious into Lex's computers. So, yeah, it does pave the way for a future episode following this, and also into the events of Justice League Unlimited. Yeah. Because, of course, Bruce Timm likes setting up really well-developed continuity. Number six is The Main Man, parts one and two. This is an episode that introduces us to Lobo. Lobo in this series is voiced by Brad Garrett. And Brad Garrett really does a good job as Lobo. I, I definitely feel like he... He had fun playing this character. Lobo is just loud explosive and just does not care he's a bounty hunter through and through and he will do anything to get the job done so in the first part of the episode he is hired by this guy called the preserver who preserves well the last of every species of their home planets kind of like an intergalactic zoo and he hires Lobo to hunt Superman Lobo and Superman fight and I love the two fights that they have in the first part. But then in part two, they end up having to work together after the Preserver captured Lobo. And the two of them have to, have to, get, have to learn to work together and get off the Preserver's ship. I love how they manage to team these two up. These two polar opposites just working off of each other. It's a really well-developed episode and I love the music they play for Lobo. 
especially just the how rocking it was just hearing Lobo's theme tune play. It's just awesome. Lobo was awesome, and this episode was awesome. The main man parts one and two were just so enjoyable. Part comedy, part action, just unique storytelling. And also, yes, there's the scene with the dodo bird. Yes, Superman takes a dodo bird back to the Fortress of Solitude where it can live peacefully. Number five, Speed Demons. Okay, and this was actually the Flash's first appearance in the DCAU, and my god, it was a good one. He and Superman are racing in this episode, and of course, they have to tape, they have to team up to take on Weather Wizard. It's a really good episode to have Weather Wizard and and just be the main bad guy and have him take on Superman and the Flash, you know, as the main, as, you know, just the, as this awesome superhero team up. It's a really good episode, and it was probably the first superhero team-up that happened in the series, and yes, many superhero team-ups would happen throughout the rest of the second season. I mean, team-ups with the likes of Batman, Doctor Fate, but The Flash was the very first, so I gotta give it that. And I loved how this had Flash's debut in the series. Um, but then he would reappear in Justice League, voiced by a different person, which would be Michael Rosenbaum. But I really wish they could have kept the guy who voiced him in the Superman animated series. Heck, I really wish Bruce Timm and Paul Dini would have made a Flash animated series as well. I mean, come on, guys. You really can't make a Flash cartoon? Like, a standalone Flash cartoon, and technically giving the Flash his own show. Okay, yeah, we got that CW show, but come on, why not an animated series, you know? It would have totally made more sense. But, regardless, Speed Demons is such an awesome episode. Number four is Two is a Crowd. This is the second appearance of the Parasite. And I mean, in terms of episode appearances... So in this episode, the Parasite is enlisted by Superman to help him find a bomb. But the Parasite's asking for something in return, which is cable television. So the Parasite goes into the head of the bomb maker, Earl Garber. But, but instead of going into his head to find out the bomb, Earl Garber ends up taking over the Parasite's body. And you have the Parasite having to struggle with his two new personalities of Earl Garver and... And Rudy Jones, who is the current Parasite. I love how the battle for... Within Rudy's mind just takes place in the climax of the episode. Garver's gotta be one of the smartest villains on the show. Well, gotta be the fourth smartest... Because I'm pretty sure Lex Luthor and Brainiac already have him beat in that department. But Garver is amongst some of the smartest. Yes, I know he technically was a fired Star Labs employee and was holding the city up for ransom. But come on. I still enjoy this episode nonetheless. So, number three is action figures. This was... Par this was Metallo's second episode of the series. Action Figures was a really unique episode. Like, you have Metallo washing up on this shore of an I on this island after his first appearance. And he is found by these two children who call him Steel Man. Yeah, I saw this episode when I was a kid, and looking back at this episode, I enjoyed it. You have Superman going to this island while this volcano is going off, and the and and as soon as Metallo gets his memories back, like of course, he shows his true colors. Like he tries to have Lois killed, and he also tries to do the same thing to Superman. And yes, Superman brought the Kryptonite suit. The anti-kryptonite suit and yet again it gets destroyed because in this series every time Superman brings the anti-kryptonite suit it always tends to get destroyed 
So, yeah, Action Figures was a great episode, and I love it. Number two is the finale of Superman the Animated Series, Legacies, Legacy, part, Parts 1 and 2. This two-part finale was just intense. Part 1, you have Superman serving Darkseid. Yes, Superman has, is serving Darkseid after he was reprogrammed by <sighs> Granny Goodness and her brainwashing. And he has become Darkseid's general. So, he sends Superman to Earth to turn the people of Earth against Superman. Just to have Superman conquer the planet. And he's got an army of parademons following him. And Supergirl tries to stop him. But, of course, the military, thanks to Lex Luthor, gives them a kryptonite warhead to subdue Superman. In part two, this lead Superman escapes from the military escapes from the military thanks to Lois Lane after he came to his senses. Superman brings Supergirl to Star Labs for medical treatment after she was badly wounded. And then he goes to Apocalypse to confront Darkseid. And the fight between Superman and Darkseid was brutal. You see how Superman whoop the hell out of the Furies. And then have him go up against Darkseid. And the fight between Superman and Darkseid was bloody and it was brutal. And I loved every single second of it. I mean, Darkseid and Superman would have this huge rivalry. Which would expand upon in to the Justice League cartoon and Justice League Unlimited so I always gotta be a sucker for a good Superman and Darkseid fight which now that I think about it I feel like Darkseid should be Superman's arch nemesis but that is a story for another day and finally number one world's finest this is how you make a Superman and Batman crossover. This three-part episode was just so fun to watch. I mean, it didn't need to be so convoluted. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Zack Snyder, for how convoluted you made Batman v Superman. Like, this had a simple story and simple setup. The Joker ends up stealing a kryptonite dragon statue and then tells Luthor, pay me one million dollars and I'll kill Superman for you. But of course Luthor is very skeptical, but then Joker shows him the, the sculpture. But of course, the Batman, knowing the Batman, he is on the Joker's heels. As Batman comes to Metropolis. And also, yeah, you got the subplot of Bruce Wayne and Lois Lane dating. Uh, yeah... Which and which their relationship ends in the third part. After she finds out that Bruce Wayne is Batman. But she doesn't tell anyone. Because Lois is just such a nice person. So overall, Superman and Batman ended up taking down the Joker and Harley Quinn. And they end up rescuing Lex Luthor. So, in all sense, this was a great episode. It was the crossover many of us had been wanting to see for some time. And, man, did it deliver. World's Finest was such a great episode and definitely fit more as a great Batman and Superman team-up than anything else. Al alongside the other Batman and Superman team-ups we got over the years, this was one of my favorites. Anyway, this has been your Digital Super Saiyan 3, and I'll see you guys next time for, for more DCAU content, or top 10 lists. See ya!